everyone. Okay, so first thing I'm going to talk about with this episode is the new bounties, which is say that, yeah, they're all three billion berries. Luffy, Law, and Kid all have, have all share the same amount of berry bounty. And I've seen people kind of already kind of get a little miffed at this, but what, one thing you all need to understand is the, natu- is the nature of, like, Luffy's abilities. Like, L- Luffy has the power of, a Nika, of the Nika fruit. And this is the power that the government wants to keep... As, like this is the kind of information the government wants to keep as much suppressed as possible so it's like you shouldn't take it too seriously because the government themselves absolutely want to make sure this does not, this gets out to, to, to as few years as possible which in itself is kind of funny because the, the funniest part again about the be- out at the beginning of this episode and the reveal of those of these bounties is the look again the look on the girls' faces when they realize the picture of Luffy was updated to him in his Gear Five Nika form, and their faces of utter panic and the fact that it's Morgan's who's doing all this on purpose like makes it even better because you know that bird boy does not give a fuck anymore. As long as he's alive, he is going to continue throwing as many wrenches into the cog that is the mach- that is the world government machine as as he possibly can. And I gotta say, I gotta respect the hustle on the man. The fact that Morgan's continuously uses his power of the press to to be to to screw with the government over and over again just puts a smile on my face because he's he's just being a massive troll and enjoying every moment of it. I, again, I gotta respect the man for that. But uh, okay. Let's get to the other part the other part of the bounties though, which is that two of the new pirates have been named which is two new pirates have been named as Yonko, replacing Kaido and Big Mom. But ne- but neither of them like the first one is obviously Luffy, but as far as that second one, neither neither of them is Kid or Law. Neither, neither, neither of that second option are Kid or Law. Like Kid and Law are not part of that equation. In fact, the other one, who became, who is named an Emperor of the Sea, is basically Buggy the fucking clown. And yes, even now, this to me is still one of Oda's biggest trolls slash fe- slash flexes in the entire series. Like it's so funny looking back on this because like it's so funny just the idea of Buggy the Clown becoming a Yonko. Like the man just stumbles into this shit. But at the same time, in retrospect, it's one of those things where you look at this and say, going with Kid like obviously for us as viewers, obviously the obvious choice would have been Kidder Law, not Buggy. But you have to remember the man who's writing this series, Ichiro Oda. The go, like going with Kid or Law would have been the conventional route, but again, this is Oda, and for however much One Piece itself dips into the typical shonen adventure tropes, when it comes to those like key narrative moments, Oda always makes the least conventional choice. What, 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 it doesn't matter if we like it or not; he will make the unconventional choice. And, beli- and believe it or n- and yet believe it or not. There is an actual logical reason why this is the case. Like it's, it just so it just so happens to to have that. It just so happens that even if it even if it will eventually be, make sense in the way it's explained, it just so happens to have that particular underlay underlying like comedic circumstances only 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 known by by pretty much Buggy just stumbling into shit that that makes him become and it kind of just makes him becoming an emperor even better in my opinion. Um, Okay, with that said, though, yeah, obviously we do got to talk about the big reveal that Hitetsu is actually Kokuzuki Sukiyaki, the former shogun of Wano, as well as Odin's father and Momonosuke and Hiroi's grandfather, and... Yeah, he survived being poisoned, which I I like the little addition they did make of actually seeing, of we get to see a little bit more of how he ended up kind of, like, like like coming back to the world of the living as it were, or just kind of like how 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 like his sheer dread at how things changed after like what was it, like twenty years of being asleep, but even more importantly, we get the big reveal. That through a conversation between Robin and Sukiyaki, that the the, the the thing that Kaido had been chasing and wa- had been searching for and chasing in Wano all this time was Pluton. Pluton is here in Wano, and 
I'll be honest, if I did have a problem with this episode, I wish they I wish they mix and match certain aspects of one chapter and, and and another aspect of another chapter with with other chapters as well because the, the, the there were certain moments within this episode where I wish we got more which that I wish it got more focus on and the reveal of Pluton is definitely one of those moments I wish got a lot more focus because as because the thing is, as a manga reader, I know the explanation. I know like the whole story and what it is with Pluton being on Wano and like what what Pluton's connection with Wano is. But it it it, it and how and I know it's not gonna. It obviously it's not gonna be explained until two episodes from now due to a missing player in this discussion. But like again, I do wish they took from that chapter and adapted it in this episode just to get to it a little bit quicker, which. Again, unfortunately, means that means that that as epic as like for me as as epic as getting the more with the fight between Kaido's crew and Ryokugyu was like it's one of those things where if if you were to ask me what I would have sacrificed in order to get more focus on the Pluton on the little Pluton thing, I would have gladly sacrificed that the the, the a, a lot more of that fight to get more with Pluton. But uh, again, it's as as they just as it just feels like. As the whole Pluton stuff just feels like a more important detail to talk about, but I guess like the manga that they do, the anime does want to build up the the other part of this reveal. Although, with that said, I do admit getting more of the fight with of Ryukugu versus Queen and King, I think definitely acts as a nice prelude of just what kind of power we're dealing with. And yeah, Fujitora was just how Fujitora was just the tip of the iceberg with how ruthless the Marines have become. Have become like with like. Ryukugyu is not someone you want to mess with. Uh, with that said, I sh I should talk about that gripe with Ryukugyu's character design I talked about last week, which is that looking at Ryukugyu from a certain angle, he shares similar character design traits with another Marine. It, who's who's it's it's a Marine everyone kind of forgets about a lot, which which which, is, which is, his, his name is Brand New, the the guy with the kind of like. Puffy, puffy green afro head and while I do think the anime does a better job of distinguishing the two char characters like physical features it's also hard not to think of the of the similarities however small they might be which begs the question again of was was this character design intentional on Oda's part or just an accident because usually Oda is good at giving his characters more defined character designs and as I said, the silhouette of Ryukugyu is kind, just, just is, is mass, a massively better character to look than the actual appearance, in in my opinion. But maybe that's on purpose to show someone so unassuming also happens to share so much in common with the Kainu, if, and maybe even more so, maybe even more dangerous. Because, yeah, that's the other scary thing about Ryukugyu, which is that however much he might have a similar laid-back nature to someone like Aokiji or Kizaru, he's also got the most he's also kind of the most dangerous and probably the most unhinged admiral we've ever gotten in the series so far. Like, already, you can tell just the way he talks about things like justice and how he views the world, the man is, in no uncertain terms, a psychopath. Like, someone who... I argue has an even more deep-seated belief in absolute justice than a kainu does, to the point of it being fanatical. And like, it, like in, in a kind, like the the thing with a kainu, is for as radical as his actions were f from the very moment he was introduced, he's with one thing. One consolation I will say about a kainu is that he has shown some small level of restraint since becoming fleet admiral. And yes, I can't believe I'm saying that either, but. Like, a, like Akainu is the type of character that, that that is made to be hated right from the jump. But Ryukugyu is the kind of character that you should fear, however goofy he may act. Like, the the the, the man the man might share a lot of again the man might share a lot of like a lot of like similar beliefs in absolute justice than Akainu, but he's way more like he's he's way he is he's much more of 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 a fanatic in in how he executes his his belief in absolute justice and that and that fanaticism that essence of fanaticism is what makes him a scary scary character we do not want to mess with it is yes he it, it's it's kind of scary be, being honest like just thinking about what uh just 
what he's capable of. But uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I've got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Analyst Control, be sure to notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share it around, guys. Dark Knight of Anime, signing off. Later, everyone.